Here, please. Bhante, I had a quick question. Um, you mentioned one of the mental factors, for instance, that is required for the idipada vimangsa. Yeah. And how is that related to the one of the factors, uh, the bojanga, the dhamma vichaya? Yeah. Is that a similar thing? Does it have a different kind of quality? You know, the texts don't give an explanation of how Vimangsa functions. We just have a standard formula on the Adipadas, and then in the Abhidhamma, where it defines each terms, each of the terms, it just defines Vimangsa with the list of synonyms, the standard list of synonyms for wisdom. So what is Vimangsa? It's Panya, Pajanana, etc., 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 Panyendriya, the faculty of wisdom, Panyabala, the power of wisdom. It actually does include in that list Dhamma Vichaya Sambhojanga, investigation of the Dhamma, and Samaditi, right view. But one would think that it would have its own special way of operating that would be different from Dhamma Vichaya Sambo Janga. This Dhamma Vichaya Sambo, the investigation of states factor of enlightenment in the series of factors of enlightenment, it comes in the second place. So the second place in the sequence. So, and then it's where it's explained in the sutta, it explains that after one becomes mindful, then one investigates different dhammas, which probably here means mental qualities, to distinguish what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, what is good, what is bad, what is dark, what is bright, in that way. So what, with investigation of states, enlightenment factor, one is distinguishing different mental qualities in order to prepare the way for the later successive factors of enlightenment. But as a means for developing the psychic powers, you know, I don't have a clear idea how it functions. Maybe if we could find somebody with the psychic powers, bring them here and say, how, explain to us. So well, Bhante, we were having a conversation last night, so I happen to know that you've talked about this subject before, but I wasn't here, so I apologize if it's a repeat for some people. But we were talking about the different um, words for consciousness that get rendered as consciousness in English, and uh, how different, maybe different teachers, like I've learned that Chitta, Mano, and uh, Winyana really essentially mean the same thing. Mm. And uh, Stephen and Suki were saying that you've discussed that there, there are that some there are subtle differences, or there are mean differences in meanings, or they're used in different contexts. Yeah. So uh, I kind of wanted to ask. It's not. I just wanted to ask what each one means in terms of what you can see in the context of where they're used in the suttas. Okay. And okay. And then also specifically with chitta. Also what? Specifically with chitta. Yeah. Um, because that's what's used in Abhidhamma. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if in experience, in meditation, if each one is distinguishable from each other, if yeah. someone's at that level, or yeah. if they're each the same in experience. OK. So first. And excuse the people who are here because I've given this explanation several times. So, <laughs> okay. So first, vinyana. 
is usually used in relation to the six types of vijnana. So we say vijnana, we translate consciousness, is, I call it the awareness that arises on the basis of each particular sense faculty and which opens up the corresponding domain of objects to cognition. So eye consciousness is what cognizes forms through the eye, ear consciousness cognizes sounds through the ear, and so on up to manovinyana, which cognizes, actually it can take the objects of the other types of consciousness, and it also has its own class of objects, purely mental objects. So that is the main use of vijnana, but also vijnana is used in some suttas to indicate what I call the factor of continuity, that which maintains the continuity of existence from one life to the next. The vijnana, of course, it's not a self or soul, like an entity that migrates from one life to the next, but there's a continuous flow of conscious of vijnana, which is unbroken going from one life to the next. So that is vijnana. Mano is used in two contexts. First, six types of faculties, sense faculties. So the eye faculty, which is the means, the instrument through which one knows visible forms. The ear faculty is what, that through which one knows sounds. Then there is the man indriya, that is the mind faculty through which one knows mental objects. So it's the mano vijnana is actually what, what knows the mental objects and mano is considered like the faculty through which mano vijnana operates. Okay, then the third, I'm sorry, that's one use of mano, then mano occurs with three doors of action. So there's body, through which one performs physical actions, speech, through which one performs verbal actions, and then there's mano, that's the door or instrument through which one performs purely mental actions, you know, thoughts, plans, and so on. So that's mano. Um, then Chitta is used, I call it, to represent maybe the center of the personality. So the Chitta is that which is subject to the defilements, subject to bondage. Chitta is that which is to be purified, that which is to be controlled and tamed and disciplined, that which is to be liberated, so that is citta. In a way, it's much more personal than vijnana or mano. And what I found was interesting, contrast with the Abhidhamma. In the Abhidhamma, they always speak about a s different types of cheetahs and a sequence of cheetahs. I did a search out of curiosity using this search function with the Tripitaka for citta in the plural, just keeping the search to the sutta vitaka. And in the few places where citta occurs in the plural, it's referring to the cheetahs of several people or beings. One doesn't find a plurality of cheetahs in one individual. So it's like each individual has their own citta, one citta. There's not a conception of a multiplicity of cheetahs following and succeeding one another. <laughs> yeah, the passages where cheetah occurs in the plural, it's like where, say, the minds of those 60 monks were liberated from the asafas. So here, 60 monks so there's plural cheetahs because each monk is an individual. 
or the minds of those devas were delighted with the Buddha's teaching, something like that. Quick follow-up, would, would it be correct to think that the definition you've given now of citta to be somewhat related abhidhamically to the bhavanga, something that which causes or enables a persistence through time of a being? That was the vijnana. What I, I said vijnana is what maintains the continuity. Okay, because you said, I guess I'm confused because we talked about the personality of the person. Well, what I Which mean by this is that, let me see. Okay, that is the citta that is in the Satipatthana Sutta, the citta that's connected with lust, that's free from lust, the citta connected with hatred, the citta that's without hatred, the citta that is covered by delusion, the citta without delusion. So personality traits are what infuse or overcome or overpower the chi or get associated with the citta. But that which, when the texts speak about the continuity from life to life, they use the word vijnana. So vijnana would probably be, in that sense, the prototype of the bhavanga rather than the citta. I have also heard uh, that uh, the thinking mind, the thinking, yeah. the calculating mind, that would be more what is referred to as the mano. Uh, yeah, actually, well. And the feelings, feelings like connected to the heart and other things would be what would be considered as chitta, artistic, you know, natural things which come on its own. And what? The natural feelings that come on its own. Yeah, actually, I And think also, vijnana, I have a... I can understand what you're saying about the vijnana, but they also refer to chakvinyana for the eyes, sota vijnana. Yeah. And you mentioned it just now. Yeah. How does that connect to the uh, stream of consciousness that goes from life to life, which is the vijnana also? Um, you see what I'm saying, right? I see what you're saying. The texts don't actually treat that explicitly, but I would say that that vijnana that goes on from one life to another would have to be some dimension of the mano vijnana. It certainly it can't be the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body consciousness. So it has to be some dimension or stratum of the mano vijnana. Because this thing that they say about the the thinking mind of like calculating and doing so many things, that is done by us, sort of, you know. That is what? We do it, we think, we calculate, we add, yeah. subtract, multiply, do all these things. And that is, we do it in our mind a lot of the time. Yeah, well, I say this thought activity. So could that be, uh, I mean, like the chitta and mano to be different? One They're more, not different, sort of. But it's the same, same mind, but, uh, you know. Yeah, it's just that, the terms are used in different contexts, but when you take it from an analytical perspective, it turns out to be this, the same thing. But it's just that the suttas use the terms in different contexts. Thank you, Bhante. If anybody else? Okay, if no questions, then we can finish for the day. Okay, so we'll end with three more half bows. <laughs>